welcome to the flight test. I'm Josh. And I'm Peter. And Peter, how many years ago was it that you made that really great video on how to make little mini FPV rigs? I think it was about a year and a half ago or something like that. That's Anyways, like, it was a while ago. One of our most popular yeah. episodes. Surprisingly, yeah, I'm a little <laughs> shocked by that. <laughs> but we had a blast with this thing. We got to take this, what, let's see, through the woods, mm -hmm. uh, chasing each other with like the bobblehead yep. scouts. We did aerial combat with it. Uh, we did the helicarrier, mm -hmm. where we flew off your helicarrier to a touch it goes with it. And it had like a little linear antenna too. It didn't mm -hmm. have a special antenna. It was like a little piece yeah, of antenna. No flow really, just, just a straight yeah. up linear dipole. And this thing cost about 80 bucks, which at the time was a really good value, mm -hmm. but it also had some limitations too, yep. like with frequency, right? It was limited to a few channels, basically because it had dip switches on it. And the camera was kind of expensive at the time and it's a little, its form factor was a little weird, but it was yeah. something you could build for not too much well, effort for a minimum the, price. At the time, it was one of the best things we had mm -hmm. and it was really great. And we actually been using it almost up to date. But now we have something a lot simpler that you could take anything around your house and make it an FPV machine. back ago we did an episode on the blade nano fpv mm -hmm. and it was a really great unit we did that with the uh a couple other fpv units that used wi-fi links right yep those are not i wouldn't go to those for real like, real racing yeah. there's too much delay and lag with those systems mm -hmm. these things have changed it and a huge shout out to fat shark and horizon for pioneering this because mm -hmm. these are awesome uh, but we have these in our store and one thing is you can take your existing blade nano or even a little tiny inductrix and hack it up mm -hmm. and make your own FPV yeah. machine. It's a great way to start learning. If you don't really know if you want to go FPV right away, so you don't want to pony up the cash to buy the whole unit, you can just buy the quad itself, learn how to buy the quad, and then buy the transmitter unit. And the nice thing is this transmitter unit can be moved to other aircraft too. It's not as fixed in or yeah. as expensive as the other thing. And it even comes a little servo and you can plug it into your receiver. You have instant power that's regulated. You gonna show us how to put these in? Yeah, I'll show you how to solder them in. So first thing is you want to get your camera. Take it out of the box, and you notice it has a lead on it. We're gonna cut about maybe two inches, two and a half. Go ahead and measure out your unit first to make sure you got enough cord to reach to wherever you wanna go. The next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna remove the flight controller board from the quad just so I can get to the solder points. Cause on the top, they put a little bit of silicone adhesive so you can't really solder to that without scraping it off. So I'm just gonna go ahead and plug this board out, unplug the two pins and pry it up so I can get to it. Once I do that, I'm gonna make sure I solder the red to the white because in this case, they're using white as positive and black as negative. So make sure you carefully solder those. That's gonna be the hardest thing to do. And when you do this, you wanna make sure you get a very good iron, very fine kind of pointed iron to do this. An SMD type iron is the best. And chances are you guys probably won't have one of those. So I'm gonna use this kind of blunt iron to do it. So anyways, it just takes a little bit of time and skill and get it on there. And if you do make a mistake, you can heat the iron up and kind of just scrape it back and forward and kind of flick the solder off. So once that's done, we're gonna go ahead and close it back up, plug the battery leads back in, and also we're gonna glue the camera on too. So I'm gonna use a little bit of hot glue for this in case I wanna remove the camera. Cause if you have some denatured alcohol, a few quick drops around the hot glue will easily release these so you can move the camera from the machine without destroying it. The next thing you do is to fit the canopy back on. I'm gonna clip it to the side and slide it back in, slip the canopy on and you're pretty much done at this stage. And if you guys are doing the inductrix, it's pretty much the same procedure. It's actually a little bit easier cause the uh, solder pads on the other side. So you just take the cover off and you solder here and there and the glue, I glued the camera on like this. You guys can do uh, whatever way you want, but this is why I found it works well for me. So not everyone gets to go to Dubai mm -hmm. and race on the, one of the most amazing courses ever created. Well, technically I didn't get a race on it. I didn't have any FPV systems or mm -hmm. FPV quads, plus I'm not that good of a pilot. You did get to fly your airplane through it yeah, though. Yeah, I got to fly the plane through it. It was really cool. cool. What was it like flying a night with that? Uh, pretty surreal. It looked, like a, it looked like kind of like a Japanese video game with the city and all this crazy <laughs> stuff and the yeah. lights everywhere. And it looks like that, what do they call it? The Tower of Terror, the Tower of Doom or something? Mm -hmm. That you hit that just the same as everyone else was, Yeah, huh? with the jet. 
Oh, very cool. Now, you guys don't need to have that. You can set this up in your basement. As a matter of fact, our good friend Eric Monroe, he even races through his basement and uses a course just with general clutter that you would find in the basement in his computer station. But you can also do things like what you did, Peter, mm -hmm. and cut out and make a really cool race course. It could be through your home, yep. or it could be through a group where uh, an area where a group of people could fly through and make a great indoor course with a very small, durable frame. So these systems are pretty great. I mean, you can use them for just about anything. You can even strap them to paper airplane if you want. One of the kids at Neff put one of these on this car and drove around the carnage at the FPV field and just followed the cars around as the planes were crashing left and right. So that's pretty you much it. You can even put things. this on a boat or yeah, a hovercraft. A boat, a hovercraft, wherever you want. Tape it to a stick and stick it in your attic and see what you can find up there. Now one thing is, is a lot of uh, new regulations have come out. They talk about if it's over what the 0.55 uh, pound yeah. limit. Mm. Two uh, sticks of butter, apparently. What's that? Two, two sticks six. of butter? Who even has two sticks of butter? If your plane is heavier than two sticks of butter, you gotta technically register it. The cool thing is, is we have a lot of really great foam board designs that are minis that you could put this rig on and have a great FPV experience without ever needing to register your airplane, all for under a hundred bucks. Now, Peter, mm -hmm. flying with friends is the best part about it. Yep. And you made these gates, and you're gonna share that file, aren't you? Yep, it's gonna be, uh, PDF will be available, for you, so if you guys wanna cut them out yourself, you can make them at home. Super, super easy. And friends, we really wanna see what you do with these courses. Use your imagination, do something crazy and fun, but do us a favor, please post it and link us to it. We're gonna share it on social media and let other people get inspired from your footage. Oh. <laughs> and if I had more time, there was gonna be a fire tornado in here, but you wouldn't let me do it. Maybe when it's outside in the summer. <laughs> friends, we'll see you next time. Why don't we do more episodes like this? It's a question of the day. Mm -hmm.